Welcome to Train Hot Dog, the podcast where I talk to myself on a train. Today we're going to be researching what it takes to become a weatherman. What's the process, what kind of training you need, and what's the day-to-day experience like? Well, first, rider man. Someone, there was one person who left a blank message from the 510 area code, but there's no actual mail, so you guys fell down on the job. Um, alright, so what is being. Okay, I want to read that a bit. What is, what is my IP? What is gluten? What is Coachella? What is it? What is it like to die? What is it about 20-somethings? What is it works? That's not a... I'm going to search for what is it works. That's not a thing. That works body wrap scam. That sounds familiar. What is it like... What is it like to die? What is it like to be ba- oh, to be a bat? That's a good question. To be... A. What is it like to be a psychiatrist? What is it like to be a lawyer? No one cares about weatherman. What is it like to be a weatherman? What is it like to be a meteorologist? So well, thanks for correcting me. I guess meteorologist is a, uh, a gender-neutral term, which I should be using. Meteorology is a fun and exciting career choice. Meteorologists across the world get to predict some of the most wildest weather. From hurricanes to tornadoes and from heat waves to blizzards, this is one career choice that will keep you on your toes. Toes. It says toes, even though I read it as toast. I'm becoming a meteorologist. Meteorology is a tough college major. The courses are challenging, but with a little planning and dedication, you can get through it. Your planning should start in high school. Meteorologists need to be good at math and science, so take all the courses that you can. If your school offers calculus and physics, take these two classes because they'll help you a lot once you get to college. The basic requirement for becoming a meteorologist or a climatologist is a four-year Bachelor of Science degree in Meteorology or Atmospheric Sciences. Some teaching, research, or management positions require a Master's of Science PhD degree or PhD. Just to give you an idea, some of the classes you'll be taking in college will be Calculus, Physics, Dynamics, Synoptics, and even Computer Programming courses. Synoptics? That's not a word, is it? Synoptics. S-Y-N-O-P-T... Synoptic Gospels. Synoptics. Synop- Synoptics Communications was a Santa Clara, California-based early computer network vendor from 1985. Um, manifesting or characterized by comprehensiveness or best or breadth of view. Synoptics, the first three Gospels which describe if Christ's life from a similar point of view. Synoptic. Of, of or constituting... Of or constituting a synopsis presenting a summary of the principal parts of the general view of a whole. So this is like a class in picture, I guess. Basic requirement, okay. Basic requirement for becoming a meteorologist or a climatologist is a four-year Bachelor of Science degree in meteorology or atmospheric sciences. Some teaching, research, or management positions require a Master's of Science degree or a PhD. Okay, I already read that. Whether you already know you want to become a meteorologist, or if you're really not sure, the best thing you can do is shadow or intern with little make your... I like the idea that you're just following them around. Like, you find out where they eat lunch, and you go hang out with them, and try to make friends with them. 
<laughs> they don't realize you're there just to learn to become a meteorologist. This is extremely important because it allows you to have a hands-on approach and really, and on, like, hands approach on watching them get lunch to really get to see how we forecast the weather. This is the first person. That, this is the first person um, documentation. Just the note: most internships aren't paid, but some of the forecasting techniques that you learn will become will be more valuable money. Here are, here's some pictures that, you sh that show you exactly what we do at a chroma key wall. Click on the pictures to enlarge. Okay. It's not working, just so you know. The pictures aren't working. The top two pictures are of me at a chroma key wall. This is the wall where I do the weather. There are monitors on both sides for the, of the wall for me to look at. You just, like, look at your favorite poems or, like, pictures of cats on the monitors. The side picture is of my camera. This is the camera you see me in, whether you're watching, when you're watching TV at home. I see my reflection in this camera, so I know where to point. Well, that sounds useful. Oh, here we go. The Yahoo Answers answers this. What is it like to be a meteorologist, really? I've wanted to be a meteorologist for as long as I can remember, and I'm just wondering what it's really like. I love weather, and I'm totally fascinated by it. I'm a junior in high school and hope to major in meteorology, so what's it like? Thanks so much, I'm just curious. Best answer, chosen by voters. It is a fun, sometimes exciting, sometimes boring field to be in, especially if one is in the forecasting side of it. It's rarely the same thing every day. You could be a broadcast meteorologist or a researcher as well. Sometimes it allows working odd hours as weather goes on day and night every day of the year. If you want to major in meteorology, do well in math and physics as coursework in meteorology is intense. As coursework in meteorology is intense in those courses. Take as many of those kinds of courses in school as you can so to best be prepared for the college level courses. Sources, I'm a meteorologist. <coughs> Other answers. Being a meteorologist is pretty much amazing. It definitely isn't an easy field, as Sis Wixman said. Is that what... Yeah, that was Siswick's man. He was, he was a meteorologist four years ago. It involves a lot of math and physics, but learning about all the different aspects of meteorology and why the atmosphere behaves as, like it does can be absolutely fascinating. It's also extremely rewarding when research results and, and or forecasts verify. The most amazing thing by far, though, has been learning certain concepts in the classroom then applying them to what's going on outside, especially when dealing with severe weather. There are so many different branches and things to study, i.e. severe storms, winter weather, climate, clouds, aerosols, etc. There seems to be something interesting that almost everyone can find interest in, whether they want to do research, forecasting, or broadcast meteorology. There's always something new to learn and never a dull moment. Sources, I'm a grad student in meteorology. I've been a meteorologist for 40 years and never tire of it. Even though I'm retired now, I keep up with what is going on and do casual work in meteorology when they are short-staffed. It is a satisfying career and one which you can never know everything, so you're always learning what's going on, there are always new things being discovered. Getting down to basics, as the others have said, you must have maths and physics. There is no way out. Wow. Once you're a meteorologist, you never stop being a meteorologist. You must do a lot more maths and physics at the university, so you have them at the highest level from school. If that is a problem, then meteorology is not the career for you, says Tento Field. I'm not a meteorologist, but I do have a huge fascination in it. I'm actually taking college classes now to hopefully be able to be a professional tornado chaser. But I wanted to say thanks for posting this question. It's nice to know that there are a lot of teenagers like me who enjoy meteorology like me. Okay, new question. Is tornado... Is today a holiday? Yeah, no. Tor is tornado season over? Is tornado alley shifting? Is tornado chasing a career? Is, your, is storm chasing dangerous? Is storm chasing a real job? A real thing? Storm chasing. A storm chaser fact checks a, disa a disaster blockbuster. Read 
Timber gets right into the thick of huge storms for a living, so we asked him to watch Enter the Storm, a new tornado thriller, and wrote back on how it compares to the real thing. As a diehard storm chaser, it was difficult for me to watch the tornado dis disaster movie Enter the Storm. This is a subject I really care about, and my expectations were huge. I'm certain that the storm chasing community feels the same. Well before I had a TV show, I knew I wanted to chase storms for the rest of my life. As soon as I got my driver's license 18 years ago, I sacrificed everything to make that dream happen. Tornadoes are my unromantic obsession. Each year we drive more than 50,000 miles and spend more of our lives on the road than most long-haul truckers, foregoing any prayer or retirement fund to experience as many storms as physically possible. My favorite movie as a kid was Night of the Twisters, in which a small Nebraska town is ravaged by a mega-tornado outbreak of apocalyptic proportions and its small family struggles to survive a series of violent supercell storms. This made-for-TV movie showed the dark side of the tornado as the devastation, but the science fiction was way over the top. My other personal favorite was Twister, which introduced storm chasing to the world in 1996, the same year I got my driver's license. Into the Storm is the first Hollywood storm chasing blockbuster since then, and it was worth the wait. Into the Storm takes place around the fictional town of Silverton, Oklahoma, on high school graduation day. Storm chasers in towns for war are an all-out battle with severe weather and deadly tornadoes. The movie features three parallel storylines. A group of high school graduates are caught off guard by the, the deadly tornado outbreak. A team of modern-day storm chasers whose mission is to intercept the eye of the tornado with an armored tank-like vehicle named Titus. And a group of beer-drinking thrill-seekers trying to capture the viral YouTube video of a lifetime. These Yahoo chasers, as they're called in the storm shooter community, are a hilarious touch. The scary part is they're a real aspect, aspect of storm chasing these days. So are the armored tornado tanks like my Dominator trucks, Iowa State's Dorothy, and Sean's Casey's Tornado Intercept Vehicle. The fictional Titus is as badass as any of these, except for the Dominator 3. Speed of Ford F-350, reinforced with steel armor, a Lexan windshield, and hydraulics that can keep it locked to the ground like a rolling storm bunker. Here's the thing that's really shocking about Into the Storm. It doesn't just do a good job of capturing the storm chasing scene, it's also a surprisingly realistic portrayal of the storms themselves. The effects kept me on the edge of my seat even though I've intercepted more than 500 tornadoes, including the infamous twin tornadoes that devastated the town of Pilger, Nebraska just a few weeks ago. Yes, the movie tornadoes are exaggerated, but as so much recent footage from security cameras and chasers has shown, buildings really do disintegrate in seconds, houses really do fly through the air. Into the storm. Okay, the point is, this guy does this for a living for real, but it's not clear whether or not like, it's like that's one dude. He said he wasn't paid very well. You don't need a meteorology degree to chase tornadoes, but if everything you know about storm chasing comes from reality TV and movies such as Twister, you have the wrong idea. Here are three ways to encounter severe weather on safe terms. some good along the way, right along with the pros. Companies such as Silver Lining Tours, Tempest Tours, and F5 Tours take groups of tourists on a six to 10 day storm chasing trips around Tornado Alley. For a few thousand dollars each, groups of 20, 10 to 20 tourists accompanied by professional guides file into chase vans and cover thousands of miles from Texas to North Dakota and as far west as Colorado. You get to see a lot of the Great Plains, says Martin Lucius of Tempest Tours. Every few storms we see a tornado, sometimes we see a brief tornado, maybe it's a slender black cone tornado on the ground for a minute or two. Sometimes it's a large wedge tornado that might be a mile wide. It might be a violent class tornado like F4, like the F4 or F5 tracking across the open plains. Sometimes these tours get lucky and conditions, conditions line up just right. Rich Hamill of Silver Lining Tours tells PM that in late May, we were in Bennington, Kansas, watching a big tornado there that barely moved. It was on the ground for an hour, so everyone was just pretty excited about that. And luckily, it just sort of sat in place, not over a really densely populated area, so nobody got hurt as far as I've heard, and there wasn't a whole lot of damage. We could watch it and didn't have to worry about anybody getting hurt. Uh, radar can become a storm spotter. Radar can give meteorologists a good idea of how a storm is developing, but experienced spotters say it's no substitute for knowledgeable eyes on the ground who can confirm what's happening. If you want to help track of your weather, Consider the National Weather Service's Storm Spotter program, Skywarn. The program offers free two hour classes in safety, reporting procedures, and basic meteorology. Anyone can attend a local class and become a spotter. Storm spotting involves monitoring and reporting severe weather at your location rather than actively chasing storms. Volunteering with the Skywarn is a great way to learn about severe weather without putting thousands of miles on your odometer. And it also be a good way to gain experience. You're much safer at home where you can seek shelter if needed than 
while you're learning what you're looking at. Find a mentor. If you have logged a year or two of storm spotting and you think you might be ready to hit the road, remember that you still have a lot to learn. Even experienced chasers find themselves in legal, legal circumstances. As the late May deaths of three chasers in Oklahoma reminded everyone, those lifers weren't aspiring novices taking off against taking off on their own to chase storms. Instead, they say, look for an experienced storm chaser who might be willing to show you the ropes. Introducing yourself and learning from your peers is essential, Revering says. Perhaps learn from several people and absorb as much of it as you can. Skywarn can be a great way to make contacts while you learn, and forums such as Storm Track are another good place to connect with experienced chasers. Storm chasing frequently asks questions. And what I'm curious is if the Stormfront people know about this. Storm chaser fact. Meteorologist salary. Eighty-nine thousand. That was very quick. Well, what about in Sedona? S E D O N A. Salary genius. Meteorologist salary in Sedona, Arizona. Uh, average starting median and top salary. Pay statistics. Oh man, here's an ad for like something I can't see because it doesn't render properly on my device. The average yearly salary for a meteorologist in Sedona, Arizona is 89000 If you're just beginning to work on your job as a meteorologist in Sedona, Arizona, you can earn a starting pay of $73,000 annually. As is true for most jobs and careers, you can secure your hourly pay rate or salary to increase as you gain experience and the longer you're employed with the same employer. In Sedona, you could eventually make an average income of around 104000 after several years on the job with increased wages. When pursuing your career of choice, you can compare salaries of similar professions and factors for raises and promotions over time. And then there's a bar graph of the three salaries, specifically in Sedona, Arizona. I think they don't have actually have any information for Sedona. They're just replicating the uh, the national figure. Oh, television meteorologist salary. That's probably different. The average yearly salary is that ad again that I can't see. High demand for television and meteorologists. I guess it's an ad for getting your degree. The average yearly salary for television meteorologists in Arizona is 106000 if you are just beginning to work on your job and it uh, is a terrible vision where you're a meteorologist in Arizona, you can earn a starting pay rate of 87000 There's a bar graph with those, with those three salary levels. Meteorologist versus... <laughs> Storm. Storm. Chaser. And I'm not seeing any comparisons of the two. Are storm chasers crossing the line? There are scientists and thrill seekers, critics guess that they're going too far. As deadly tornadoes spun across parts of central Oklahoma on May 31st, the National Weather Service office in Norman urged residents to immediately find immediate shelter. If you're stuck in traffic on I-35, you are in danger. Please try to get a, a building or safe shelter. NWS Norman tweeted. I'm trying to load NWS Norman's profile here. Oh man, NWS Norman. Wow, he says to find shelter if you're on I-35. That was in May 13th. And then May 31st, 2013. Yeah. U.S. Norman. Oh, and that's not... It's not... Norman isn't the guy's name. Norm, it's Norman, Oklahoma. That's disappointing. I thought it was National Weather Service Norman, like the your friendly Nor neighborhood Norman. 8.03 p.m., he tweets, five hours ago. 
he or she, because it's just the city. 8.03 p.m., a strong storm remains over Gould. Localized flooding, hail up to the size of nickels and wind gusts in the air. Does he have a database of different things the hail can be up to the size of? I hope they're different, like it's in Katamari, where like, you are the size of 73 of these, and it just gives you a random item. Okay, apparently tea storm is actually a word that he uses a lot on purpose, it wasn't just a typo. So that's a couple of showers are starting to pop in western Oklahoma. Expect this, expect this isolated convection to continue into the afternoon slash evening. Okay, WX. Oh man. Brian Joseph, he asks, Frederick Radar down again? Norman says, yes, part is on order. Not sure when it will be back up. Brian Josephy says, thank you. I was wondering what happened. Stay cool today. Looking for Miranda Bailey says, looking for an app with relative humidity prediction graph to help bailing alfalfa. Any suggestions? NWS Norman says, where are you located, Miranda? Miranda Bailey says, Weatherford, Oklahoma. If you go to this page, forecast.weather.gov slash mapclick.php, question mark I, ellipsis, and scroll down to the bottom right, there's an hourly graph available. And then Nobles Norman says, no problem, without Miranda actually saying thank you. Maybe she deleted that tweet for some reason. Storm tissue stayed on the roads, heading directly towards the tornado itself. Radar imaging posted on Twitter Friday night shows that a, the deadly El Reno twister touched down. Several cars were precariously close to the tornado core. Three of those storm tissues lost their lives. According to research, acclaimed researcher Tim Samaras, his son Paul, a videographer, and chaser Carl Young were among those killed by the EF tornado. Related tornado chaser Tim Samaras killed, fans paid tribute. The other channel's Mike Betty is in the other... The other two others were injured in the same twister when their car was tossed 200 yards. Reed Timmer, who was f featured in the Discovery Program Storm Chasers, escaped without injury, but his armored car, Dominator 2, has his hood torn off by the twister. Thank you.